Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and this is the chicken coop slash goat barn project. If you're here from the previous video, you know exactly where we're at in the process, but if you're not, let me get you caught up to speed. We're building a chicken coop slash goat barn. Okay, I think you're all caught up. Here's what we've got done so far. Shadow Mike is in the way. You know, he's following me around. We have concrete piers in place. custom welded brackets I made up at the barn. It's gonna be 12 by 24. It's gonna have chickens and goats in it. We've got all that work done already. Let's go grab some posts and we'll start getting some posts up. Okay, one take intros, it's a new thing. The awkwardness is alive and well on this channel. I just built those forks maybe a month ago. There's a video on it if you want to check it out. I built them from kind of some scrap and some forks I got for a pretty decent price. And then these, we milled up ourselves out of trees off our property from the pond build. And it's not that I'm cheap, I promise. I just, I don't have the money for all the new fancy stuff. You know, we make do with what we have. You run what you brung. And uh, I brung, brought, I don't know, some posts. I got the other posts. There, go down the back side, sitting here. Step one, though. Like I mentioned, I made these brackets out of some three inch by eighth inch flat stock. I need to drill a couple holes in them on each one. And we're just gonna do that on all of them, just on one side. So that is done. I've got two holes in each of them. Now, obviously, when it's all said and done, we plan on drilling out and running a through bolt, a heavier bolt through all of this. But I just want a couple holes that we can run some T25 screws in to hold the post up, get everything plumb level and square, whatever it needs to be. And that way we can actually kind of wiggle it around if we need to. Now, this was the first time I've ever milled anything whenever I did this lumber. Here are these posts. And it shows they're not all identical and they all have a little in them somewhere. On the corners, I'm going to put the bows towards the outside because then I can just kind of notch out the post where the purling goes so it's good and flat down the outside whenever we put the siding on. On the ones in the center, I'm going to try to put the bow in line with the wall so the flattest side is on the outside of the wall. That's the plan anyway. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just screw a kicker onto the side of this. This way.
Left-handed makes things tricky. Let's do it right. There we go. Stable enough. Let's do that. Oh, I gotta get some more two by fours. Easy peasy. Now these center posts, <laughs> they're nothing to look at. Look at, oh gosh. Well that one's the letter C. I'm confident of it. Whenever I put these brackets in, I put a string line down the outside to set the brackets. I'm sure some of you guys saw that on the first video. Stay. So I'm just tapping the post to the outside of the bracket. That should be pretty straight for us. We'll double check it with the string line here eventually. But just to get them up and standing, that ought to work for us. And then double check yourself, of course. On down the line we go. And then we do the same thing down on this end. A kicker and a kicker. Get those secured, get the bottom of the post, and then get it plumbed up. Now, as far as plumb goes right now, we're just kind of getting them close. And once we put the permanent bracing in, that's when we'll dial everything in to get it perfect. Well, as perfect as we can get it with the material we're working with anyway. That one I had to trim up a little bit on the bottom. It was a little bit bigger than four inches. But other than that, nothing too crazy. Everything went pretty smooth on this part. So we have all the posts on the outside up except for that one, which we'll do later on. And then of course the one, two, three, four down the middle. But we're at a point where we go ahead and put the girt board on. I've already gone around the laser and made marks on the corner posts for where the top of the girt board needs to go. I just gotta make a few cuts and kinda get this stuff out of the way. Whenever you're doing stuff by yourself, the braces just kinda lay where they lay. You make sure it stays upright and you'll figure it out as you go. And that's what we're doing. Like I said, I already made my marks with the laser. I'm going to chalk a line across there and we'll get that front board on. Got a bunch of these galvanized ring shanks left over from when we built the pole barn. I mean a bunch of them. 
I'll put some screws in there just because that's easier to do one-handed, get it on the line. Then we'll finish it off with these galvanized nails. They hold a little bit better. Especially if you hit them. Also need a battery. A little below the line here. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm just a little below the line here. I'm just use the hammer to yes. raise it up like that. Run it on. Okay. Mm -hmm. I finished with the Now before we put this bottom board on, that's gonna cover that bracket. I need to go ahead and get those bolts, the permanent bolts I'm gonna put through there. We're sticking with the frugal theme. I've got some old carriage bolts left over from another project, been sitting in a coffee can for probably at least 72 years. And we're gonna run those through. We'll put two of them in each. We're just doing the corner posts because the other brackets are still exposed and we can buy some new hardware for those down the lines. But I gotta get these done so I can run that board across. Should reach the other side. No, it does, it's just pushing it. I don't need. All right. Do just fine. So I drilled through a nail. That one right there. Went right through, screwed up my bit pretty good. Well, that's not terrible. All right. Got those little marks there now. I don't think it matters all that much. What I'm doing now. Probably not an end of the world type thing, but. Make it sit a little more flush. I'm gonna throw one screw in here just to hold it up there. Do the same thing on the other end. Right there. So 
Well, like I said, everything comes off that, oh, buddy, including the tape measure. Everything comes off that bottom board. Six foot right there. So we're putting in the permanent cross brace on this corner, one this way, one that way, and then we can start taking these temporary ones off so we can work. So now we gotta get plumb perfect before we put that cross brace on. Earlier we were just kind of getting everything pretty close. Looks great. Double check. Check all the way at the post. Yeah, looks really good. So I've got these left over from the timber bridge project. Let's see if we can put these in without splitting it. Just trying to kind of use up all my leftover hardware. But in a way that makes sense. I don't want to just waste it somewhere. If I can get in here to the right angle. saying it liked it but it did it okay and we'll have one on the outside as well like that okay so that's the next step A lot of people are going to say that is way overbuilt. Thank you. I, uh, I genuinely appreciate that comment. That's the purpose. Yeah. So now I've got this one up. So this temporary brace can come down. Is there anything there? Just the level. Okay. So you can see I did that cross brace on the left side of your screen. I did that same thing going down the front wall, and then I did it on the right side of the screen, did it down there in that corner as well. So we've got this front section cross braced how I want it. Now that we have that, I'm going through, uh, chalk lined the height of the post all the way across, and now I'm just cutting the top of the post off to the height they need to be. And then what's gonna support the rafters, there's gonna be one two by six that gets notched in to sit on the post, and then one that gets sandwiched on top of that one, so it'll be doubled up two by six. So I'm going through now, I'm taking the skill saw, cutting what I can for that notch, and then taking the saws on, finishing that cut off. But you'll see, I'll show you close up here in just a second when we get this all done. Just making a little seat for that two by six to sit in and then doubling it up. And then we'll go ahead and put the purlin on here as well. Then we'll move back down to that far end and just keep working our way around. So I'm getting ready to put this purlin on and I'm just, same thing I did on the other side, going from the bottom to the top and just making sure I got a good even inch and a half there so that it planes, planes well for me. These posts might have a bow in them this way. That's kind of how I put them. If there was a little bit of a bow, I put it towards the outside so I could trim it, shave it if I needed to right here. But all of these look pretty good, honestly. Yeah, I'm gonna put a purlin on there. work.
But you can see that plane's really well. Down here on the post, looks really nice. A little bit there. I don't think you'll be able to notice that by the time we get the siding on. So as far as this side goes, that's it. It's time to move on around the corner. This right here will be a gable. This will get cut out and that'll gable up, but I don't know what pitch to make that until I get that center ridge pole in or center ridge beam in. So that'll be something we have to do later. We'll leave it for now just to leave everything tied together. So right here, when we're done, there'll be a sliding door. And the same on the other side. It'll be able to open all the way through. What we're going to do is catch these glasses, and then we're going to run a 2x6 across here to tie this and this to that corner brace. And then we're going to double this up. We're going to run an X back down that way. That way there's lots of strength in this corner since this kind of, this is going to take all the strength since this side's going to be an opening. That's what I'm getting at. Now this one will just get a board on the outside. I didn't need to notch that. Flag on the play, unnecessary notching. So on the bottom, 12 foot, half inch. That's what we're gonna cut it. And that's what it needs to be. Hopefully, that works out with plumb on the post too. Otherwise, we did something wrong. Or whoever milled these, milled them wrong. One of the two options. Pretty straight. You stay. Oh, I can reach. There we go. So I just flushed it up with the end. Hopefully that shows plumb. <laughs> shows pretty good. Pretty good. I will take that. Lovely, just lovely when a plan comes together. 74 and a quarter, 73 and a half. So by measurement, it needs to go this way. Let's see what the plum says. Where? What did, where? A little bit. Four and a quarter. We'll move it, match the measurement, and we'll double check with the level. Oh, now's not the time. Here's. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Not much. Exciting things happening. Well, I'm excited, but you know. You just, can't, you can't make this up. Come on, guys. We slid it over the measurements, so the measurement's even. You see my pencil mark? How's that work for you? Works for me. The next thing is to uh, start getting down that backside and get that fifth post set right in the middle I don't have yet. To do that, I threw a couple kickers on to tie the back to the front. That way she doesn't lean too far out on me. Got that bottom treated board on. Set on that laser line that I've got. So we'll make sure we're the same level all the way around. And then just threw the two by sixes up on the top side there to tie all those together. And once we had that in there, we were good to put that fifth post right in the middle. So it's a new day, a couple days later. We had a pretty good storm yesterday, but that cross brace is on. That purlin's down the back and that cross brace is on. Now we're working on this side. I've got the new brackets made. 
But before we can put that new bracket on, we gotta get this bottom board on. Before we can do that, we have to put the bolts in. I've already got the bolts in on that side, so now we're finishing up on this side. I went in yesterday and sharpened my drill bit up on my bench top grinder. I should have done that in the first place. You guys ever forget that you have the exact tool you need to do the job you need to do? I do that all the time. Anyway, it's drilling great. I still have to use that Craig bit though to come through and punch a hole for me because my first bit, this bit's just not long enough. I don't know where to come through it. And by the way, I know I'll get some kickback on the comments that it should be on drill. When you're on drill, there's no clutch engaged. It just drills. But that's how you smack yourself in the face. I just run it at the top of the clutch, a little past 13. Sure, it gets a little annoying, but not as annoying as being smacked in the face by a battery. That's super annoying. But bigger bits so I can set that carriage bolt in there. Should be enough. That'll do her, bud. I got a little reckless in my spending, too. I went to the hardware store, to our local tractor supply store. It's the closest thing we have that sells hardware. And I splurged on new hardware for up on the rafters. But look, yeah, I know. I bought a whole paddle bit. One paddle bit. I, I'm getting reckless is what I'm doing. I hope, I hope you don't judge me. Okay. Just marking out for the carriage bolts, their heads there. It's way easier. The amount of luxury here. Don't worry, I'm still a single battery kind of guy. I mean, I've got two, but one's on the charger. One's on the impact, okay. Let me come in just a little bit. The bracket will go like that. So we'll put the bracket pretty close to the line, but not right on it. Oh heck, let's just put it right on the line. Trying to figure out a good way to mark this so I can drill it. Give me a little indentation. See what that does. Ah, yes. Very nice. Castle. Okay. Will those? No. Will that? Yes. Lovely. Beautiful. Figure out what size that is. We'll tighten it down. Cut it off as low as we can.
and we pull this. That looks perfect on the string line, right like that. You think it'll be enough space for you? I think so. It's not the finished floor yet. We got work to do, obviously. I don't have anything with me today. Sorry. I know, empty handed, see? Nothing. All right, go hang out with your friends. I'm working. Look at that high quality mixed job, huh? I think that'll work. Heck yeah. Trim those bolts off. I had, you know, it's like I had a thought to go with that, and then it just gone, you know? So this is where we're at. So I just got those two brackets mounted, painted. They look good. They're ready to go for the post. Got two more posts on the tractor over there. I was hoping to get all four of these set and all the posts set in this video. But Chelsea and I are actually getting ready to take off for the weekend. I got to get some things done before... We go, I gotta get all the chickens rounded up and just, you know, all that normal stuff we gotta get taken care of. But this looks awesome. Looks awesome. So with those two brackets there, how we have this X on the end, you'll have that right there and right there as well, running to these two center posts that we haven't put up yet. And then obviously a ridge pole across there. A little bit of a pitch. Then there'll be a row of windows, top of the roof, pitched down to the backside. Whenever we get back from our little weekend trip, I've got Monday and Tuesday off still. So Monday and Tuesday, which will be the next video, which will be Thursday, we'll get those two posts up, the ridge beam in, and if the weather allows us, we'll start getting some rafters and stuff like that on too, and just really, really start getting this thing ironed down. I mean, it's looking, it's looking really good. I'm so happy with the way this thing is turning out. I hope you guys are liking it. I hope you're enjoying the channel. I hope maybe one day I'll get less awkward at one take outros, but it is what it is. The tools are picked up. I'm going to go get picked up. I don't even know what that means. I don't know. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.